Hey, how you doing guys? It's KB5 MIQ Big Boy. Today's video, we're going to talk about 10 meter FT8 for new techs, new hams. Now, before I get into this, I want to make it perfectly clear. I am in no means trying to pass myself off as an expert on FT8 at all. I'm still learning it, but with the amount of techs that we seem to be losing this hobby, Hail ham radio cat that uh i want to try to do everything we can to try to give them some more incentive to stay in so we're going to talk about that in a few minutes let's get over a couple things right quick i've got the i want to touch on um y'all remember there's two really cool ham radio live streams ham radio clubhouse coffee and ham radios i've had to, i was a guest on both of them had a great time and bunch of good guys to listen to and watch some good shows watch them i try to watch as many of them as i can but with cows and 91 year old dad taking care of i don't get as much youtube time as i'd like all right i already got the prize for a 1500 sub giveaway brand new tyt uv88 dual band talkie that was uh sponsored by broken circuit ranch youtube channel thanks kent appreciate it Guys, I'm going to link a couple of videos on here, one channel and one video, that will give you the best information on digital comms and ham radio, especially FT8 and Grid Tracker. Suburban DXing, he's got a ton of good videos on digital communications, and KMRD Ham Radio 2 has got the best Grid Tracker video out I've seen. In fact, it's helped me get into that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that more in a minute. We'll get over here and show y'all what little I know about Grid Tracker. All right, guys, we're going to talk about techs on 10 meters working digital. Well, let me clarify something, all you techs. You need to be sure and follow the band plan. And I'm going to go over it with you. Everything, I'm going to talk about 10 meters down, just HF. Y'all know what you can do up in the... Uh, digital stuff well actually let's talk a little bit about that two meters you got yeah that's you do everything above six meters i mean you got that down so let's just talk about 10 meters and below the only band you have data privileges is a 10 meter band 28 zero to 28 three is cw reading data 28.3 to 28.5 is, is single side band CW. That's the only place you can run data. You have CW only privileges on 15, 40, and 80, but that's just CW. It's not FT8. So the only place you can run FT8 is on 10 meters. And that can be pretty fun. I'm in no way an expert on it. And not going to pass myself off being an expert on it. So you guys that really know FT8, this video is probably not, you're not going to enjoy it, so it's not for you. I'm trying to do stuff to keep techs interested in the hobby. So, let's talk a little bit about how you're going to get on to FT8. Go to have a computer, go to have an HF rig, sound card, or sound card interface and a proper cable. I'm not going to give you any suggestions on that. Everybody knows an HF rig is fairly expensive. If you got a rig, the only one that comes to mind that I can know of is a Yaesu 991A. It has sound card capability, so all you have to have is a cable. There's two programs that you'll need to run, and I'm going to read them off because I can't, I'll get the one of them wrong on top of my head right off the bat, but I'll show them to you on the computer here in just a minute. And if you don't have a radio capable with sound card, you have to have some kind of interface, the uh, signal link. It's a good one, but you'll just have to get one for your radio, and there's too many variables there for me to cover. So, HF radio, interface, computer, antenna. That's what you're going to have to have. The, the uh, software is free downloads, and that makes it a lot easier to deal with. All right, uh, let me pause this. If I, well, I'm just going to stop. Okay, the main FT8 program is this W... S-I-T-X, that's your FT8 program, and this is Grid Tracker. This shows you what's going on 
I've got the gray line toggle. It'll also do automatic log in the logbook of the world. So if you go into settings and then go into logging, here's all the ways you can link that up to do automatic logging. It'll link QRZ if you have a paid subscription. I don't, but I have my logbook of the world tied to it and it's updating it automatically. So let's get out of that. All right. Basically, the two programs run in conjunction with each other. Don't ask me how. Magic, I guess. I don't understand it. It's something new to me still, but it is kind of interesting. You can follow the gray line here and see all these stations that are on right now on 10 meters. Let's see if we can connect to somebody. All right. Let's see if we can do a Canadian station. And when it goes into transmit, all right, I'm transmitting, and you'll see this is my QTH, and it's showing I'm transmitting up here on Grid Tracker right now. All right. And I usually let it make about five transmits. Some people say let it go till they connect. I don't. If I ain't connected in about five tries, I usually stop. I run my radio, this is not my radio, this is, a, I borrowed this from K1ENT Kent. Okay, are connected. When you're connected, that automatically changes it to red, and he's hearing me at a plus 06, I'm hearing him at a minus 09. All right, this pop-up has already come up here telling me I'm connected, that's from Grid Tracker. This is all automatic, as it does this. I'm waiting for him to give me a report received. Some stations do. I've had some that don't. See, he said report 73. I sent 73. It's out. Right now, this pop-up comes up. And it's okay to log on to uh, Logbook of the World. So every time you make a contact, depending on how you have it set up, this will set up stations calling CQ in green. When I make a call, it goes yellow. When it's connected, it changes to red. This pop up, I just exit out. So, let me stop again. Hey right, guys, shout out to K1ENT Kent for loaning me this Kenwood 940 with the interface. Uh, he had he gave me an interface for this 897, 897 I got. We never did really get it to work it good, but this seems to work real good. My understanding, FT8 is a weak signal mode. I've seen guys on here running power on FT8. I run 50 watts. I turn his radio down to 50 watts for two reasons. One, see if this, you know, phantom is enough to get the required communication through. And two, FT8's kind of like, it's a dead key mode. It's going to be transmitting full watts on your finals there. So I turn it down a little bit. It's not my radio. I want to be sure I take good care of it. Uh, one thing I've noticed, this two-element Moxon Yagi, I work about as many stations on FT8 off the back of it as I do off the front. I'm going to pull up uh, Law Book of the World, show you some of the countries I've worked. I've said this in other videos. I see a lot more countries popping up on here on FT8 than I've ever heard on single sideband phone. By no means am I trying to substitute this for single sideband phone for me because that's always been my favorite thing. But trying to help these new guys out and keep them interested in the hobby. I felt like I needed to try an opportunity to use this some and learn it just so I could kind of point out a few things to some people. All right, let's pause this again. Okay, right here, I'm back in the uh, logbook of the world and you'll see the station I just worked right here is already in it. Now look here at these countries I've worked on FT8. M-A-L-A-W-I, African country. I uh, worked Japan off the backside, Azores, Belize. Here's a country I worked the other day. Bulgaria, that I'd never seen. Oh, and here is, where's it at? Well, I know I've done a lot of FT8 here lately. I worked China. Did I miss China on... There it is right there. China. Worked it off the backside of my beam the other day. Worked China on FT8. 
I still do logbook of the world. I mean, a QRZ. I put these in manually. And, believe it or not, I still do a manual logbook. It's just my thing doing stuff. You'll see a lot of stations popping up here. And this, this uh, grid tracker makes this a little bit more interesting to do. Like right now, there's somebody calling CQ for that country. That's where it's outlined in red. I found that out the other day. All right. Let's stop it a minute. As I know, that's not the best FT8 explanation you'll ever get, by no means, because I'm still trying to learn this myself. Uh, it's interesting. A couple of good things about it. If you're mic shy, you don't have to talk, and no sad hams. No beacon station on 10 meter 28, 425 you have to listen to. It's just you making contacts on your computer, a lot of hams are going to run this mode down, and a lot of hams really like it, and I got no problem with it. Uh, it's, it's been interesting for me to, to sit here and make contacts with it. I still rather work voice myself, but it's an interesting mode to try, and if it'll keep you guys interested in this hobby, to keep you from just ending up with a talking and trying to work repeaters and getting bored with it, I'm all for it. Just remember, you want to have an HF rig, an interface, computer, power supply, antenna. So it's going to be a little expensive to get into. The programs are free downloads, and it's just, it's really a, it's a fun hobby. It really is. It kind of makes it kind of fun to be. And it's another mode you can do with radio, and it's, it's interesting. But be sure to check out Scott and... Uh, can't remember the guy's name. Ham Radio Tube, KMRD, Mike. His video's out. He explains Grid Tracker better than I've ever seen. And Scott has a ton of videos on here on digital communications, FT8, and CW. Yes, remember Main Training Company in Paris, Texas. Uh, he's got new used gear hitting there all the time, and we're still waiting on his big announcement. I'm sure it'll be good and good for Ham Radio. Thanks again to MFJ, and congratulations for MFJ for being in business 52 years. We're at 1,357 subscribers. I got the Shack Gadget back going again. <laughs> Kent gave me a new version of the Shack Gadget, and uh, I joke with him, if anything he builds, that if there, I can figure out how to use it, he's ready for mass production with it. So thanks again, Kent. All right, everybody, thanks for everybody subscribed to the channel. If you call MTC or MFJ to order something and you'd like hearing it from me, be sure and tell them you heard it here. This is KB5 MIQ Big Boy, 73.